are looking into the state of the nation and the role of the church in the uh, national discourse. So much has been going on. Before we took that break, we talked about the COVID-19 response and how church behaved and how uh, our leaders behaved in a manner to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. And as we speak, the curve could be could say it's going down, uh, but the Ministry of Health is encouraging us not to lower our guards yet until we are at zero. Now, we are now talking to uh, Matters Corruption, where uh, before we went on break, uh, Reverend Mike Kuria had mentioned that uh, we need people like uh, Zakias who returned what he had uh, taken from the people. And now I'm directing that very question to my political analyst, uh, Private Socrates. Do we have politicians who are willing to return what they have taken? Because every time someone has been uh, mentioned in a scandal, one, I will, I will resign over my dead body, and then the communities, our people are being targeted. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> for the short period of time that I've been alive mm -hmm. and uh, been able to have a front row seat towards the political and social development of this country. Our politicians, sadly, mm -hmm. do not have the moral conviction to come out and say, I have been found culpable of certain social offenses, and uh, I declare that I'm not fit to hold public office, and I'm ready to pay. We do not, they're not that mature, man. <laughs> Look at them. They, <laughs> yeah, they, you know, <laughs> they'd rather, you know, explore the extreme worst case scenarios mm -hmm. than uh, come out clean. And I think this is occasioned by our previous political, geopolitical culture. Because we have nations where one would resign because they simply came to parliament session late. They will say, Mr. Speaker, sir, pardon me for the last uh, sittings I have been late and, you know, my reasons for lateness are unjustified. I'm unfit to, to continue serving this honorable parliament. I beg to step aside. And you're like, wow, I mean, that is, that is huge. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Kenya, you know, uh, 40 billion in your account and you go, you, you have the audacity to summon media to your house <laughs> in Karen and, you know, Runda and other exotic, you know, residences and, and, and say how, how people are after your life when clearly and evidently you've been found culpable. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have uh, the Zacchaeus in our country, maybe in the years to come when we, we change the geopolitical culture mm -hmm. and we breathe uh, n a fresh air into the moral fabric of governance. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you know we are also to blame as the larger citizenry. Because uh, look at uh, the guys we elect is a reflection of who we are. Mm -hmm. So if you elect somebody who is going to steal, right, uh, you really need to be careful who we give uh, power to transact business on our behalf. Okay. So we are not yet there. All right. Now, finally on this, uh, Reverend, you said uh, the pulpit has been the platform. Yes. Uh, do, do you think it's about time the church changed the tactics of approaching these uh, manners of corruption? Of course, uh, because as timing changes, we also need to change with the timing. And I think one of the things, another thing that the church needs to do mm -hmm. is uh, what I would term as the refusal to fraternize. And this is basically where you intentionally refuse to honor in church mm -hmm. people whose source of wealth is questionable and you give them total blackout. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that has also uh, entrenched corruption deeply in this nation mm -hmm. is because our politics more often than not is ethnic based, not right. issue based. True. And when one person has been, uh, you know, charged with corruption, the first thing that they do mm -hmm. is they retreat into their tribal cocoons. And so we have this Mutuetu syndrome. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who stole public funds. But when finally EACC, you know, catches up with me, mm -hmm. I run to my backyard and I say, we are being persecuted. Mm -hmm. You know, we are being followed. We are being destroyed. Mm -hmm. All right? And I think 
Politicians normally thrive on the ignorance of the people. And I think right now we need to make a clear decision mm -hmm. where we want this nation to be the next 30, 50 years. If you want to continue with the same trend, imagine it's up to us, mm -hmm. but we can change that narrative. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another thing that we can also do as a church is uh, just uh, raising a crop of leaders, you know, who are accountable, full of integrity, and uh, maybe Christian leaders should not shy off mm -hmm. from getting into these political and public offices. Yeah? So that probably they might also, other people might see how leadership is done. Y you see, we've been, uh, we've been fed with a lot of negative issues until there are some people who, when you say something is like, church leader, mm -hmm. they tell you, ah, ah, wait, wait, pastor, watch a mambo ya siyasa. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. This nation is too big, too valuable, and too precious to be left to the politicians. Hillary, True. just imagine, mm -hmm. leaving Kenya to politicians. The media is not speaking, the church is not speaking, uh, you know, uh, the politicians are just running this country. Mm -hmm. It will crash. And that is the narrative they are always selling to us. Mm -hmm. And so I think even as a church, we should do much much more you know in terms of holding people uh accountable eh, so that uh, of course there has been this debate especially when there are you know fundraisings in church yeah and uh, politicians that. are coming mm -hmm. there's some people who've been feeling that uh that's like uh money laundering you know <laughs> eh, the proceeds of corruption are finding mm -hmm. uh, their way in church mm -hmm. uh there has been that debate it is still ongoing right. all right mm -hmm. uh, but i believe the church in modern africa has played a role mm -hmm. in bringing positive change in the society a perfect case study is a place like south africa mm -hmm. you know where clerics like desmond tutu you know they fought hard to ensure that uh, the apartheid regime comes to an end and it came to an end mm -hmm. and so i believe the church is properly pray placed Mm -hmm. in raising leaders and uh, I'm just imagining like uh, part of what I do is mentorship and somebody comes to me and tell me paps MCA mm -hmm. you know and then I give them I tell them it's okay and then we pray for this person and then we campaign even for them mm -hmm. you know we, we can when this person begins to go off the rail we can call this person and say man mm -hmm. this is not how we brought you up yes mm -hmm. and you really need to change mm -hmm. yeah. Number four, we need to start being bold in calling out these people. Because I think where we have the level that we have gotten into, mm -hmm. man, we really need to call out these people. Let us call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. That if you have found stealing public funds, carry your own cross. Yeah? Don't go back to your family. Don't go back to your community. Don't go back to your people. Mm -hmm. You know, deal with it. Because when you are stealing, you never involved us. And by the way, you did not even give us a coin, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think they normally even wanted to pick an amayai kwa uso. <laughs> Check this out. Mm -hmm. You steal public funds. Right. And uh, when you're coming to us, you're coming with a chopper, mm. you know. Pesa yetu. No, litoka kwa migu. And then you're driving, you know, posh cars, mm -hmm. you know, posh Cayenne, mm -hmm. you know. Which other posh car do you know, you know. I wish I knew. Uh -huh. <laughs> and all that. Yet, mm -hmm. we are even giving you an opportunity to address us. How dumb can a society be? You know, mm -hmm. that we have allowed crooks and thieves to set their agenda on this nation. May God really have mercy on us. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the high time we, take, we begin even taking personal responsibility mm -hmm. and begin educating people on some of the virtues and qualities to look out for mm -hmm. in leaders. It is not just about, uh, you know, and then I say, my, oh, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. I think we also need to look at the track records. Right. All right. And personally, I am of the view that if you're standing for a public office and you have a case in court relating to corruption, you should not even be cleared. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, deal with your mess and then come. But what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Look at most of our legislators. Actually, they have loads and tons of cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah? 
since they entered politics. Uh, and mm -hmm. so to clear their names, they get this money in corrupt deals and then they pay some two people and then they are sanitized. You know, right now we are talking about sanitization. Sanitization. <laughs> it has ha happened severally. Actually, these matters, uh, corruption, I, I feel itchy. I wanted it to end here, but I feel I, I, feel I still have a pressing issue because we have uh, things to do with the leadership and the kind of message that is being sent as uh, Socrates. Mm -hmm. We have young people who want to be in politics. If the people who have been there, uh, what... Um, Machako's governor would say a system that has been there for us for some time. The young people would go there and still they start getting corrupt. How do we end corruption if uh, the people who are there, the kind of mentorship they are giving us to us? Do we have a people right here? I know you interact with most of the young people and the young parliamentarians. Do we have young people right now who feel like when I go there, I'm going to be different? Okay, Hillary, two things. One, the tragedy of uh, the contemporary society is that the, the modern youth wants to go to uh, positions of leadership with the mentality of hashtag, it's my turn to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you just feel that now you are, you are, you are, you've secured a seat where the national cake is being served and you have to take huge mm -hmm. chunks of it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you kind of feel that it's your turn, and therefore you have to, you have to take a lot of money. You have to buy houses, cars. You have to maintain a certain level of lifestyle. That's the first tragedy mm -hmm. the contemporary youth is facing, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, <coughs> number two, existing systems mm -hmm. do not allow one to maintain their their integrity when they get to these offices mm -hmm. because of a very, not a so good uh, history and culture mm -hmm. of uh, governance. It goes back to one thing, strengthening institutions tasked with integrity of the country. Mm -hmm. Re-evaluating existing laws that mitigate corruption. As a youth, you have to have it at the back of your mind that when you're going to parliament, the moment you steal money, there is the hangman's news waiting for you, right? You'll be given examples of guys who are in jail for the things they did. Mm -hmm. Existing uh, leaders, leaders of the day, leaders of today must move with speed and reevaluate existing laws. They have to put more capacity to existing institutions that fight corruption. Mm -hmm. And they have to at least jail certain people who've been successfully convicted. That way, we as Africans have been trained to learn by example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that once we see that you know, this government is serious with matters of corruption, we will not dare to steal money because we kind of fear what goes on in jail. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to policy. It goes back to reevaluating existing laws. Mm -hmm. And just to add that, to that, right. I think we also need to make some of these, uh, especially political offices, less lucrative. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this for a fact, the, one of the quickest ways to become rich in Africa is by becoming a politician. Mm -hmm. Because a politician, you're somehow above the law. Yeah. And uh, you see all this, there is a certain lifestyle that you must maintain, mm -hmm. surrounded by 20 bodyguards, eating in certain restaurants, dressing in a certain way, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so most of the young people, unfortunately, these are some of the people who've been their models. And so to them, it is not about service delivery. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, making it in life. Mm, being them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And so if we can even reduce, like he was talking about policies, if we can reduce the salaries mm -hmm. of politicians, you know, so that it is only people who who are passionate about bringing change and leading mm. who are able to get there number two we also need to reevaluate on how we do business with the government mm -hmm. i think the rain started beating us when uh, we realized that i can hit a jackpot by just doing business with the government mm -hmm. and that is why all the young people nowadays mm. they, they just want to do business 
with the government you know tender preneurship true just mm -hmm. open a company mm -hmm. open an account and then when the government says that we need people to supply this get some few people inside government yeah, and then supply air mm -hmm. hillary with all due respect with all the intelligence that the government has I seen that. somebody has <laughs> the guts to supply mm -hmm. air to the government and they still go scot-free mm -hmm. and so you find that there's a person who did not supply anything to the government and they are receiving a cool 100 million shillings this person has friends this person has other people who are looking up to him mm -hmm. do you think they will value hard work they mm -hmm. will value patience and you see that is why we find ourselves perennially in a cycle of corruption and all that and so if the government can just be able to seal those loopholes and ensure that even before you trade with government there there needs to be a certain threshold man mm -hmm. eh, because that is I, I mean it's bad uh, but that's quite true but now these are the kind of people we'll be voting in and i we, we we can always agree the agencies or the commissions that have been tasked in civil civic uh, education like the IBC have failed when it, it comes to uh, the campaign period. Uh, they do not uh, train or educate the public on how to vote, who to vote for. The only thing will be shown is the X and the. But now matters integrity and what have you has been left behind. For, uh, for the media to tell us this and this has been this and of, of course at some point the media will not do that The media might at some point go their own way, but now coming back to the church How is the church? Um, training or educating the members of the public on how to vote for who when number one uh, information is power and uh, part of one of the things they are doing is that we are partnering with the government, you know, to ensure that there is a proper uh, dissemination of information mm -hmm. on important issues so that people may make uh, informed decisions. A perfect case study is the BBI. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this again for a fact. Mm -hmm. A majority of Kenyans, they do not know what BBI is all about. Mm -hmm they will either support or oppose BBI based on what your favorite politician has said. True. And that's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. I remember the last time when we were uh, voting, you know, doing a referendum for the current constitution, mm -hmm. there was a very huge divide and quarrels and disagreement in this nation. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that the government did, and I was so happy, mm -hmm. is that uh, they produced copies. Yeah. Because there are some people who are even, you know, caught on camera saying, ah, if so-and-so has read this document then, and he has <laughs> said it is good, then it is good. I don't need to read it. Mm -hmm. That's madness. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, that is when the church partnered with the government and its voice was heard. And the government produced some copies. You remember? Yeah. And people were given idea. some copies of the constitution. I still have mine. To read <laughs> so that you may make your own decision. So part of the thing that we are doing right now mm -hmm. is even partnering and appealing to the government that on matters which are of national importance, why don't you bring this information down to the local Mwanainchi so that he may participate mm -hmm. in that thing. And then we are also using all our platforms, you know, including the media, mm -hmm. you know, internet, TV, radio, mm -hmm. to even educate. We have a role of educating. Mm -hmm. Sama -sama. Mm -hmm. Number two, we also have a role. Nowadays, we do not shy off. If, some, if we feel as a church, mm -hmm. something or some sections of a certain document is bad, we tell people mm -hmm. that we feel as a church, this is not the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It does not conform to what the scripture says. It is not good for a nation, mm -hmm. yeah, and it is not good for this society. Mm -hmm. All right, that is part, partly uh, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right.